It wouldn't be Star Wars without this, and surprisingly, the Acolyte has it. The following is a world-class Bullshitters exclusive. The Acolyte is here, and we've been talking about it just a smidge pinciati. The newest Star Wars series has caused a schism in the fanbase. There are some who love this series and everything Disney puts out. Then there are the individuals who are a bit more discerning. Both parties make up the Star Wars franchise, but as history shows us, the thirstiest of Star Wars fans, ready to lap up everything, forget to lap up the most important thing to Lucasfilm. Today, we're going to be looking at some Ollie's fodder and a whole lot more. But before we do that, today's video is brought to you by me, Jeff Hicks, and my graphic novel, Woke Busters. Got outrage? Call Woke Busters. Don't you just hate wokeness and the toll it takes on society? Well, bust it with Woke Busters! <laughs> Set in a world where outrage turns people into literal monsters, Wokebusters follows the four men who step up to save society from itself. It's funny, colorful, and action-packed. This 100-page epic is only available on Kickstarter for a limited time, so act now before the clock runs out and wokeness wins. Got outrage? Call Wokebusters. The history of the Star Wars action figure is as interesting as the film it's based on. In 1977, George Lucas was looking for a company to create toys based on Star Wars. Major toy companies like Mego passed on the opportunity, but Cincinnati-based Kenner Products took a chance. Kenner decided to make the Star Wars action figures a smaller 3.75-inch scale. They were more affordable, but this way they could sell vehicles and playsets as well. The decision revolutionized the action figure market. The Star Wars toys launched in 1978 and were an immediate success. Demand was so high that Kenner struggled to keep them in stock. The popularity continued through the subsequent films The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Kenner produced a vast range of toys during this time, including action figures, vehicles, playsets, and a whole lot more, including things you never saw in the film, like mini-rigs. These toys are now considered to be collectible and hold a special place in the hearts of many Star Wars fans. A slew of new merchandise that not only excited the fans, but sold well. That has changed in the modern age. That's something we'll address later in the video, but if you think the answer is video games, it's not. The Acolyte has a lot of people talking about the show. More people are talking about the show than are watching it, but it is getting the same attention that other Disney Star Wars series are getting, toys. For most Star Wars toy launches, there is a level of hype, but over the last few years, Star Wars toy launches have been met with utter apathy. The Acolyte has many fans surprised that Hasbro would be forced to produce these figures. Well, they have been, and here they are. Let's take a look. First off, there's Yord Fandar. He comes with a lightsaber, a cloak, and a tray of meatballs from Ikea. Up next is Jackie Lon. Eh, sounds like a medical exam. Let's move on. After that, we have Jedi Master Sol, the only character worth a damn. We also have Mei. She's like Rey, but darker. And finally, there's Indara. That's Carrie Ann Moss's character, who died in the first four minutes of the show. Like all Disney Plus series, the wave of Black Series figures are fairly underwhelming. The characters, they all look the same. I get it, they're Jedi, but variety is the spice of life. Lucasfilm has created a series that fails to entice toy buyers. The figures are based on characters audiences do not know, do not care about, or in the case of Indara, they don't get a chance to know her because she's dead. The woman they used to promote this show dies in the first four minutes. This isn't Psycho. She is not Janet Lee. If you think the Acolyte has Hitchcock levels of creativity, you in fact may be Psycho, or suffering from vertigo. I can't tell from my rear window, but if you walk north by northwest, you may find someone who cares. While these figures look boring, there's always solace in the fact that they'll end up on clearance at Ollie's. Now, I know a thing or two about Ollie's. I've been there once or twice. Since Disney has taken over, Star Wars has a huge presence at discount retail outlets. Historically, Star Wars toys sold incredibly well. Now, they don't. It's not that people dislike Star Wars completely, but the majority of the cash-spending audience doesn't like new stuff. It sounds obvious, but there are people out there with their heads in the sand, or in reality, up their asses. Fans see new Disney Star Wars toys and know it'll end up in the clearance bin. How do I know? Well, take a look. For the last six years, we've been talking about new Disney Star Wars toys popping up at clearance in record time. Two weeks after The Last Jedi, we were finding the figures clearanced out for $1.25 each. It kept happening with Solo, and by the time we got to The Rise of Skywalker, there was no dedicated movie toy line, just a smattering of Black Series figures. The Mandalorian bucked that trend, but that's the past tense as The Mandalorian and everything associated with him ends up on clearance as well. That adorable little baby Yoda isn't that cute anymore, and people have moved on. All Disney Star Wars toys end up at clearance, and the Acolyte is next. The press fought for Reva, but look where she is. Here at Ollie's, too. 
While the political posturing sold no toys, it also failed to sell lightsabers as Reva was the first Star Wars crowdfunder to fail. Fans spoke up, or didn't, and now Hasbro doesn't want anything to do with her. You don't see popular things on clearance for very long. If they overproduce something, you'll find it, but on average, popular characters sell, and sell, and sell. You don't see Marvel Legends Spider-Man at Ollie's, ever. You see Marvel characters including the mighty Black Panther, but not Spider-Man. Spider-Man sold, and that's why they keep making figures of the character, even if they're just small, marginal improvements. Star Wars used to be so popular that it was difficult to find some of the figures. This was only a few years ago, too. Up until 2013, Star Wars collecting was firing on all cylinders. What changed? Well, Disney took over in 2012, and the licensing costs went through the roof. The quality declined, and the fans left. The remnant stuck around, but the numbers thinned. Or did they? Star Wars is back trying its hand at crowdfunding, and this time they're milking Old Faithful, the original trilogy. Yes, Hasbro is back with another Haslab, and this time it's the Moss Eisley Cantina. As you can see, thousands of people want this. In just a few days, this thing will be funded, and it goes to show you that people love Star Wars. They're Star Wars. A billion dollar company, crowdfunding toys is another topic, but if you'd like to see the world of entertainment grow in a positive trend, you can check out Wokebusters, and together, folks, we can get better entertainment out there. The cantina will work. The ghost worked. Nostalgia works. That's what's selling here. No one is nostalgic for the sequel trilogy or anything Disney+. Plus. We keep getting new stuff to clog up the pipes, but fans just want better versions of the things they love. They used to do it this way. Didn't like the prequels? Well, there were multiple Star Wars toy lines that were prequel trilogy free. Lucas didn't cut out the original trilogy. He tried around The Phantom Menace, but even then, Hasbro took the new improvements from The Phantom Menace toys and applied them to the original trilogy. That sold a lot of toys. People will return for the ultimate versions of their favorite character. There's no such thing as too many Han Solo figures, if they keep improving. The Acolyte toys exist. They don't look very good. They'll probably be produced in lower quantities, so if they don't show up like Holdo or Reva or Jyn Erso, that doesn't mean that fans bought them all up. It means that Hasbro learned their lesson, and they're tired of losing money on Star Wars toys. Now, if only Lucasfilm would follow suit. So folks, what do you think about the Acolyte toys? Here are your three questions for today. One, are you surprised they make them? Two, what do you think of their appearance? And three, which one will clog the shelves at Ollie's? My guess is that none of them will show up at Ollie's because very few will be produced, but that's just my take. I'd like to know yours down in the comment below. Folks, The Acolyte has been a lot of fun for the channel and we'll be back this week with another review, so join us on Wednesday for that. Also, folks, we're going to be reviewing the boys here on the channel. People like to talk about the commentary surrounding uh, an entertainment product, and well, the boys likes to punch down on the fan base because the creator thinks he's smarter than you. He might be a smart, intelligent man, but he's also full of shit, and that's where World Class Bullshitters comes in to poke fun at him, his stance, his position, his hypocrisy, and a whole lot more. So join us on Thursday for a review of The Boys Season 4, and we'll be talking about all that political crap that goes with it as well. But folks, you can join me on Saturday for a new toy video, and friends, I could use your help. I talk about being the change in entertainment each and every week here on the channel. I talk about wanting better stories, better creations, better everything. And I've spent the last three years with Wokebusters making sure that that book meets my standards that I have for the entertainment world and exceeds what I'm seeing out there. Friends, if you want good quality entertainment, Wokebusters is a great investment of your time, your money, and beyond that, you're helping change the world of entertainment. Stealing Solo was a hit, and I want to make Wokebusters an equally big hit. So folks, if you want a story that makes fun of the society that we live in, if you want a story that makes fun of the outrage, the shit that makes you roll your eyes on Twitter, the shit that helped you find this channel and channels like it, well, guess what? Then Wokebusters makes fun of that. It's not making fun of Ghostbusters. It's making fun of the world we live in in a nice, convenient package. So folks, if you want to help fight the literal manifestation of internet outrage, get yourselves a copy of Wokebusters today and help fight outrage. And again, friends, I want to thank you guys for joining us today. We'll be back next time with more. And if you don't mind, I got a favor to ask. Well, they say if you give a man an inch, he'll take a mile. Well, I'm taking four miles because I'm going to ask you to do four things. Be smart, be safe, be cool. And here's the most important part. Always be excellent to each other.